address that somewhere in the end of like what is the internet brought to us and basically it's they brought who uh, what's her name um, Rebecca Black and uh, who uh, Gangnam Style and who's her, and uh, Jeffrey Star like who have they developed and you know where where how does art happen on the internet like or music. Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be very, very difficult. And that's, that's like when people say T-shirts and, and touring. Yeah, it's like, like, like the thing said, you know, it's also like authors can't tour. You know, journalists can't tour. This is really a bigger, bigger problem. I mean, you have to think Canaries is a coal mine. I think we should, Pandora thing, yeah. we already covered this stuff, I think. Well, one thing they want to do is they want to pay everybody 85% less. They entered into agreement uh, three years ago, and uh, it was approved by the uh, Copyright Royalty Tribunal. And uh, then uh, they decided, they, since they were um, picked up by Wall Street, they uh, wanted to make more money. And so they decided they weren't happy with the rate after all. So now they go back to Congress uh, because they don't like, they went to the judges and said, oh, we changed our mind. We, we need to make more money. And the judge says, no, you made a deal. You're going to have to stay with that. And, and it's a fair rate. So then they're like, we don't like that answer. We're going to go to Congress. Congress, change the laws for us. Get us out of the deal that we agreed to. So help us breach our contract and, and make it legal. Um, change the judges so they're political appointments so we can have influence over them. Um, let's stop them from collective bargaining. Let's stop them from being able to speak out. And if they do these things, we're going to nail them with the Sherman Act, which is an antitrust um, law. And uh, the other thing that they did is they sued every single artist organization. They sued Sound Exchange. They sued um, even SAG and Actor. They sued because it's vocalist. They sued the Musicians Union. They sued who else? Like uh, the songwriters organization, ASCAP. They've sued everybody because because they want to pay less. They're going to they're going to use the legal system to say we want to pay you less and we're going to make it happen no matter what. Whatever it takes, whoever we have to buy off, whatever we have to do, and continue with our misinformation campaigns, we're going to get the consumers to side with us and go for this free idea. So as long as consumers think free, they're going to go with them. They're going to influence Congress, write the letters, because Pandora organized everybody quickly to tell Congress to make that happen for them. And because they control the communications channels, they are able to again, manipulate and, and convince everyone who listens to Pandora that they're in the right and the artists are just, they don't need that money and they won't have a Pandora if they don't change the rates. And, and then they keep on with the same forever. A decade <laughs> I've heard this, change the business model. The music industry is going to change its business model. Well, you know, I was there in the 90s with the dot commerce and they're a bunch of morons and they're tech geeks. <laughs> they know nothing about creative stuff like music or anything creative. They know nothing about it and they were like, well, we're tech culture and you just don't understand understand us and you know you just have to do it our way and I still deal with these people now well we're, we're tech and we don't have to do it your way well we don't recognize work made for hire in this area this is unusual you know and they're like oh no we're, the, we're it's just our culture you know we just have to you have to just do it our way or we're just not going to do business with you anymore and that's still their their way of thinking and they thought this in the 90s and in those days they didn't even know about assets they're so dumb I don't know how they got so big I couldn't believe it when it was they happening brought, they brought in Wall Street Harvard business fake. graduates to run the business. That was the downfall <laughs> but, of everything. But uh, I mean, one, one of my lines is like taking advice from Google and Facebook and those other companies about the web safe harbor thing is about like taking advice on nutrition from Colonel Sanders. <laughs> it's just it's, that's and that's but that's what people are doing. That's what, it's it's funny, but it's. But you gotta love it's America. Effective. You know, money money is power, and they have more money and power than anybody at this point. They've gotten really big uh, at our expense. Like like power. one of the, I I forget I don't know where this fits, but the, uh, the one of the big things they do to like back to the confusion thing is they they the, there's a big moral distinction between sharing. Well, that's what sharing is caring. There's a difference between sharing with family and friends. Like I think iTunes allows five copies, and you know you give you give one copy to one person, and they've tried to make that the same as as, as illegal distribution. You know when somebody distributes, they they confuse. They you got to keep it in your mind. There's a moral distinction between sharing with friends and distributing it on the internet for profit. I mean it's kind of obvious, but you know you you heard it here. You're not going to hear it on the internet. You know.
Have you ever heard of the idea of collusion? What that means? Collusion when people like get together and conspire to like defraud somebody. Like uh, in the old days, there's an example when people weren't allowed to get divorced, so the wife and husband would collude, make a way to pretend that one of them did something to get out of their situation, which was a marriage contract. Well, to me, it seems like this industry's colluded, and they're, they've gotten together. They want to figure out how to rip us off better, and they've gone to Congress. They're trying to breach well, a contract. Well, that's why that's why we're here. We're, you got to educate the people that, like, hey, you know, you can't be, you can't believe everything you it's read on the internet. It's fraud misrepresentation. It's fraud <laughs> misrepresentation. They are brainwashing people to believing that things that are they illegal are, are legal. Well, that that's the, they use. They induce the, you to they, breach. They use their data mining. They use their data mining to, like I say, lead you in the direction before you even know you want to go there. That's really, that is, that is the scary, scariest thing. We're kind of in this, it's like little frogs. Uh, if you turn up the heat slowly, they don't, know, they don't know enough to jump out. That's exactly where we are all at as a society right now. And, uh, there's an author, Andrew Keen. I, I haven't been able to read his whole spiel on it, but I saw his line. He says, we're going through an upheaval that is similar to the Industrial Revolution where people moved to farms in the cities, and then you had all, started having all these pollution things, and child labor, and, 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 and unions came out of it. But it's that, it's that. But the thing is, it's hitting more people. I mean, like in, in, the, in down in Oakland, where I live, you know, there used to be a Barnes and & Noble's and a Borders. And now one of them's gone, and Best Buy's on the ropes. But around that thing was like, there was, for every job that goes, there's five service jobs around it. And so, like, the which one closed? Was it Borders or Barger? Borders? Borders closed down, but there was like you know dry cleaners, uh, coffee shops, cafes, restaurants, car mechanics. All that got just sucked, and it's like, and all these jobs are getting shipped overseas. I'm not, no, not overseas. They're getting shipped off into hyperspace. We don't even know where they are. They're in India or you know, you know, West Virginia. Amazon is just like. <sighs> coming in and just like, you know, killing your main street. You know, it's, if, if, if people don't wake up, it's, we're all gonna be like living in Walmart. <laughs> well, yeah, how does society suffer? We're kind of talking about some of that yeah. right now. Yeah, illegal use of consumer data is really, oh, actually, it's not even illegal. It's unethical would be the right word, you know. It's just, it's just not right. They really don't, they really don't care. I mean, they obviously don't care about musicians because you know they they you know they just have not been very supportive, shall we say? You know, I mean, like I say, Google can pay twice as much on a YouTube stream and still be rich. But they like to pretend that they're our friend, they're our partners. They oh, like that, to well, they always like oh, they, they you know here's some 18 year old that's making $500 a month on YouTube. You know, they always put these these people up, you know, and then it turns out he's actually, it's really, he's, he only puts out one, one uh, music video a month. Most of the time he just sits around and talks about himself. You know, it's like, and, and I don't think he's, you know, it's not the same as like listening to John Lennon or something, I would imagine. <laughs> Yeah, the EFF, um, I remember them when they started in like 1990, 1989, and uh, I, I was trying to start an artist, recording artist rights organization, me and this guy from, the, uh, from USA Today, um, Bruce Herring. And we were trying to start this up, and I had an, a girl who was working with me, and uh, she was an artist, like, like 19 years old, 18 years old, and she was hanging out and partying with this guy, his name was John Perry Barlow. And she's like, oh, you've got to meet my friend, he's really, really cool, and he likes to trip and do stuff, he's amazing. And you know he's into artists. You know you're gonna love him. You, maybe he can help finance what you're doing with the artist rights thing. So she arranged for this get together thing, and uh, he's told me how you know we're definitely working together. We want to help artists and musicians. We're totally about what you're doing, and it was a total lie. And when it, as soon as I, he started talking more, it's like, but wait a second, that's not what we're trying to do. Wait a second. He goes, but don't you believe in like you know the internet's gonna help you? I was like, no. I've been from, I'm from the dot, dot com times. I already know the inside of that. It's like I don't want any of that. It's like you know. I have we, to say, I I bought the stuff up until about two years two years ago. I I was, I was an independent Lars. artist, and I thought this is great. You know, you know, running an independent label is hard. I just to clear the record, I, I alternative technicals be offered, and I started, and I withdrew from it in 1986. But I ran it in the early part. And there was a conflict of interest between the band and the label, and I ended up running Dead Kennedys, and he was running DK Music. I mean, DK, uh, sorry, Alternative Technical Records. Um, 
but oh, I forgot. Where was our subject? <laughs> we were talking about yeah, maybe we should EFS. take. Well, actually, there, there's questions. A, well, actually, I had a, there's a couple solutions. Uh, okay, uh, there, there's there's two bottlenecks in the internet, and one one is like your ISP. In the United States, uh, from what I understand, there's only 12 of them, like you know your Verizon's, Comcast, and stuff. And and in, in one of uh, there's a there's a new service, Move M U V E. Uh, from Cricket Mobile, where you, you like when you get your cell phone, you can get ten dollars more a month and get music. And this is actually how Spotify was successful in Sweden, but they don't tell you here. Is in Sweden, it, they were they had a ten dollar charge on cell phones, and that's how they made their money. They really didn't do it for free. So anytime you see an article that doesn't mention that about how successful they were in Sweden, it doesn't say that. That's misrepresentation. And uh, and the other the other side of it is like these these is is the credit side the Visa, Mastercard, PayPal like this this that Russian site we showed, and and the uh, Kim.com and Mega Upload, it's all through Visa and and these people just process these credit payments and don't even know that they're financing a criminal organization, and 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 there is there is start there is some pressure on them now like every once in a while when it gets too outlandish like PayPal cut off an account and stuff. But there's no reason these people should be making money being, you know, being able to get a credit, you know, get a credit account when they're doing something that's just illegitimate. And the other problem with this is that this is where like, you know, a black market drives out a, a legitimate market. It's really hard for someone that does want to uh, you know, help artists or pay them fairly because somebody will steal. It's like back back in the Back in the Industrial Revolution, uh, of uh, I think it was Teddy Roosevelt said, you know, okay, if you have all these factories, they had the child labor was a big problem, and and, and the guy said we have a hundred factories that, and 99 don't want to use child labor, but one does, and the one does by 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 paying children half of what a man does or a woman, but mostly they the they drives the price of the product down. So the other 99 have to do child labor also. You see how that works? And this is how those pirate sites work. It's like there's, it's really one of the reasons Pandora and Spotify are having a, you know, they're making money on Wall Street and selling stock, you know, but they're not actually making a profit that much. It's because they're com also competing against pirate sites and it kind of, that's how there's a saying, you know, bad money drives out good. And that's what's happening here. Oh yeah. So anyway, uh, so that's one solution. Is it, actually it, just using the organized crime statutes that exist now, they could they could go and cut off the money to to illegal sites and uh, illegal cyber lockers and illegal BitTorrent sites, and and that would have nothing to do with free speech. They could put up anything they want. They just have to pay for it out of their own pocket. And how many, you know, how many people are, uh, you know, they're not, how how many. How many uh, are going to stay up if they have to pay out of their own pocket? They're in it for the money. They're not in it for the speech. And they benefit. Yeah, and you know, and so that's one way to you know get around that whole thing, and that's being worked on. But yes, we should take questions, if any, or. Okay, so.